everybody, my name is Allison. I'm the Programs Outreach and Youth Services Manager here at Monterey County Free Libraries. Thank you for joining me today for another episode of Self Care Sunday. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some tips to unplug and detach from our phones and social media. This is something that I've been trying to do a lot lately, realizing how much time I spend on my phone. And so I wanted to brainstorm some tips with all of you. And I hope that if you have any tips for unplugging, you will share them in the comments below. This also connects back to a video we did a couple weeks ago about getting better sleep as detaching from your phone will help to rest your brain in the evening and prepare you for a good night's rest. So one of the first tips that I have for unplugging is simply setting timers on your phone. So a lot of phones have timers that you can find in the settings that will allow you to only have a certain amount of time on apps a day. So you can set it for half an hour, an hour, two hours, whatever you want. And after you've reached that amount of time in the particular app, a little screen will come up letting you know that you're out of time for that app for the day. And you can even do things like set passcodes on so that you can't get back into the app unless you have a particular passcode. So this helps to at least make you aware of how much time you're spending on your phone and on apps a day, even if all you do is override the alert and still use the app. You get that visual reminder that you've spent an hour already on Facebook or Instagram. And connected with that is you can set a timer for using your phone for the entire day. So I have mine set for 10 p.m. So after 10 p.m., every single thing that I use on my phone comes up with the warning saying that I've already reached my time limit for using my phone for the day. Connected to this, and this is a little bit more um, harsh, is deleting all social media apps from your phone. So that was something I did when I was trying to cleanse from social media. I just deleted all of the apps. I didn't delete my actual accounts or profiles. I just deleted the apps so that in order to use it, I had to either re-download the app or go on the actual website. So it became a lot harder is, a, is, is kind of a relative term, but it required a couple more steps for me to use the app, which meant that I was always thinking about how much I actually wanted to be on it. It wasn't just a mindless thing where I found myself mindlessly clicking on that app and scrolling through things. Related to those two tips is to set time frames when you're going to be completely media free. So saying, um, you know, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm not gonna check my phone. I'm just gonna focus on work or if it's the weekend on doing activities with your friends and families, but I'm not gonna have my phone involved. Or saying after 6 p.m. when I'm home for the day, I'm not gonna check my phone until whatever time. Just setting times where you're not even looking at your phone, maybe you put it in another room, maybe you turn it off completely, put it on silent, something so that it's out of the way and you're focusing on something else. Another great tip is to not use your phone during meal time. So I know that often, especially when people are eating alone, you're eating and also just scrolling through your phone because we're not used to being without our phones anymore. We're not used to kind of just staring off into space while we eat or while we're sitting alone waiting in a waiting room. But setting the phone aside while you're having your meals also means that you're being a more mindful eater, which connects to a video we did sometime within the last year or so about mindful eating. When you're not looking at your phone constantly, you can be more focused on your meal and what you're eating and get more enjoyment and satisfaction out of that. The same goes with having conversations with people. If you're out at dinner with somebody, putting your phone away completely and not having it out on the table is a great way to make sure that you're connected to the conversation that you're having and you're showing the people that you're with that they have your full attention. Because even if your phone is out on the table and flipped over so you can't see the screen, you're still putting your phone on the table as if it's a person in the conversation. So you're indicating that if something were to ding on your phone, you would pick it up and look at it instead of giving the person that you're with their full your full attention. Something else that I've been trying to try to unplug is to not feel the need to take pictures of every single thing. So having experiences in my life like going to the beach or going to a park and not taking pictures of everything that I see. Because when you're taking pictures of so many things, yes, you're saving the memory for later, but there's research that shows that you're not actually processing the memory or you're not processing the experience as much that you're actually living because you're more worried about capturing it instead of experiencing it. So that ties in with a lot of videos we've done about being mindful and more present in the moment. But if you put your phone away and actually, you know, soak in your surroundings, the research shows that you have a more solid memory of that event and that you might not need that photograph anyways because you'll actually remember it better. And the last tip that I have for unplugging for today is if you do a lot of games on your phone, try moving those games to real life. 
So some of them you can't. There's no real life version of Candy Crush, for example. But if you do Sudoku on your phone or the crossword puzzle, try doing those on an actual newspaper or you know, printing them out from somewhere and doing them on paper. Maybe doing them with somebody in your house or a friend. And this makes sure that you're not on your phone, so you're detaching, you're not getting that extra screen time, all of the bright lights and brain stimulation, but you're still having the fun of doing the activity and the game. And this can also be a great thing to engage with people in your house. You could try doing a board game instead of all being on your phones for an activity to do in the evening or on the weekends. So there are, very, there are many, many, many tips about unplugging, and these were just a few I thought that I would share with you. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any tips you would like to share, I would love to hear them because I think that we can all agree that unplugging is something that has become very hard to do, but is very necessary in order to make sure that we're present and mindful in our lives, and also to help us with things like mindful eating, better rest, better sleep. So I'd love to hear whatever tips you might have to share. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.